Hi guys, so today I wanted to cover the anatomy of a terrible, terrible essay. Um, and again, we'll be focusing on the dressmaker and the crucible, just because that's what I've been doing so far. And this should really be a study on what to avoid when writing. I won't go too far into structure, because we talked about that in the last one, but um, I will be going over what to avoid in terms of how you're writing uh, and what you're writing. Now, one thing that I do want to note before I start is that I am being rather harsh with this essay. Not as harsh as I can be, but quite harsh compared to how I evaluate student work, mainly because I want you guys to pick apart and be able to see what's wrong with it. Um, so do keep that in mind. Usually I am not this harsh. Don't worry, I'm not going to judge your work and be like, oh my god, it's terrible. And the reason why I'm disclaiming this is because I was thinking that if you guys want your work evaluated, um, I might start this thing where you can send it to me via email and I will react to your essay here. Um, and obviously I will do it anonymously, no emails attached. I'm not going to be roasting it like I'm roasting this one. It's just going to be constructive. Um, I'm going to tell you what can be done to fix it and how you can improve, essentially, as well as what you're doing well, obviously. So, um, I may put an email in the description, I may change my mind, who knows, we'll see how it goes. So, let's have a look at um, the introduction, so I'm writing on the same prompt as I was for the good essay. In Arthur Miller's The Crucible and Rosalie Ham's The Dressmaker, destruction is explored as both of the communities in the texts were destroyed. In The Dressmaker, Tilly Dunnage, well, I really wrote Till Dunnage, Tilly Dunnage destroys the town of Dunkatar by burning it to the ground. She also indirectly causes death, or in, death of or injury to other characters. In The Crucible, the people of Salem die because of the witch trials, showing that people's lives and the society they live in are destroyed. Okay. Um, it should be they live in, not thy live in. I'm going to blame autocorrect. Um, it might not have been, but who knows. Um, I guess I could also blame this on the fact that it's supposed to be a bad essay, so let's just go with that. Okay. So what went wrong in the intro? There was a lot of storytelling. There was no mention of really how it was going to answer the question or what it was going to cover. It basically just rambled on about where destruction was shown in the two texts. So whenever you find yourself storytelling, the fix is to ask yourself whether you're actually answering the question or just telling the story or the parts of the story that relate to the themes presented in the question. Um, a good way to force yourself to analyze as opposed to storytell is to start a sentence with one of the following uh, sentence prompts or sentence starters, I guess you could call them that. The first one is, this suggests that. The second is, whoever the author is, does this so that. The third one is, this is important because. And the last one is, this is done or shown through XYZ. So those sentence starters make it very hard to simply tell the story, because you can tell the story before you write them, finish your sentence, throw the sentence starter in, and then that forces you to write more deeply about the story that you were just telling before. Now, um, the last thing that was wrong, or majorly wrong, with that intro was how I used the word explored. So let's have another look at it. Destruction is explored. So I don't say how the, how the theme was explored, I don't say where the theme was explored, I don't say um, when the theme was explored, so I'm not saying, I'm not even telling you what the ideas regarding that theme were, all I'm saying is that the theme was explored, right? And you can get a lot more specific than that. You can say, they suggest X, Y, Z about the theme, you can say, they approach XYZ theme in two different ways, or in these similar ways. So, can you see how simply to say that the two texts explored this theme is not adequate when you compare it to a more specific and in-depth analysis? 
Okay, now let's move on to the first paragraph. So again, I'll be using a separate approach for the bad essay. I shouldn't call it a bad essay, I should call, call it maybe like a low scoring essay. Um, so basically the way this works is that the first body paragraph will be based on text A, the second body paragraph will be based on text B, and then in the end, I'll do a paragraph that compares them. Now notice that here I've swapped around the order that I talk about the text in. This is something that we want to avoid, and I've done it on purpose um, because this is a bad essay. Okay, in The Dressmaker, destruction happens when Tilly burns down the town. She also destroys the lives of the people. For example, she unknowingly blinds Beulah Harradine, who loved to gossip, and is implied to be indirectly implicated in the death of Mr. Almanac by giving Irma Almanac brownies laced with cannabis which cause sleepiness. Destruction in the text often takes place in the form of burning. Fire acts as a symbol for destruction and renewal. The people of Dungatar returned from their Eidstedford to find that their homes had been burnt down and were completely distraught by this. This shows that their lives were destroyed. We see destruction in the burning of Dungatar in The Dressmaker. So let's talk about why this paragraph was a train wreck. So there is one line of analysis here with lots of storytelling. So the line where I talked about the symbolism, that counts as analysis. The rest of it is all storytelling, and I already talked about how that can be addressed. So I won't go any further into that. The next problem was that the one sentence of analysis was actually quite shallow, because I used the word renewal, and then I didn't attach any caveats to it, and I didn't talk about what I meant by renewal. Um, and the problem with just saying renewal is that renewal is very vague. They could build a new society altogether. They could build a community that was exactly the same as the last one. Or they could build a community that was worse, right? So in the last essay, the good one, I talked about improved societies versus stagnating societies that will just rebuild themselves in the same way that they were before. Here, I've simply used the word renewal. And there's actually a fix for shallow analysis. Um, a lot of teachers will just write the word vague or needs more detail on your work when they see shallow analysis, which I personally don't think is very helpful. So um, this area of study requires you to ask the question of how the texts were constructed primarily, and then beyond that, look at why those construction choices were made. So your key questions are how and why in that order. Now when in doubt, when you've already done that but you feel like you haven't analysed enough, ask yourself why again. So why have they done this and why have they chosen this method to get the message across? Why are these two texts different in this regard? Is it because they take very different approaches or they talk about different historical events or periods? Think about that and include it in your analysis if you feel that your analysis is too shallow. After you do that, because I'm assuming that you'll be writing in an integrated or semi-integrated way, you can then link it to the other text. The other problem with this paragraph is that there was no evidence, and it, um, the part about burning, you could call that evidence, I don't really think of it as evidence, but it comes from a very narrow evidence base. There's only one piece of evidence if you count that as evidence. So the fix for these two issues is actually really, really simple, and it's just to know your texts well. Okay. Let's move on to the next paragraph. In the Crucible, the social contract upheld by the people of Salem is destroyed, as it suddenly becomes righteous and holy to accuse each other of witchcraft. The personal grievances of the people were brought before secular courts to be settled, leading to the destruction of their way of life. People also lost their lives, and families like the Proctors were destroyed by the witch trials. The integrity of the people who confessed was also broken because they had to condemn others in their confessions in order to live. This is how destruction is shown in the Crucible. So, let's talk about what went wrong here. The first thing that went wrong was the one-word quotes that don't need to be there. 
So one word quotes shouldn't really be in your text unless you want to dis discuss the use or the connotations of one specific word that you think was used for a specific reason. So um, I kind of see this with students who don't know the text very well because they'll add these one word quotes and be like, look, I used quotes, I was so good, I had had my evidence. That doesn't count because the way you should think about quotes is that they should only really be incorporated when they add something. When the quote itself is demonstrative of your point, when it acts as evidence of your point, that is when you can use a quote. The other issue is that there was no analysis at all. So once again, you would use the sentence start as given. Um, and um, you would also ask yourself if you're answering the question. Now, this is my problem with the separate approach to writing, because if you have all of your analysis in the first two body paragraphs, by the time you get to the third, it feels redundant and it feels repetitive when you're comparing them. So um, that's why I actually prefer the integrated and semi-integrated approaches. But let's get into the next paragraph. The final body paragraph reads like this. The texts are similar in that they both demonstrate the destruction of communities. In the dressmaker, this is symbolically done in the burning of the town, and in the crucible, this is done directly and overtly through the breakdown of the relationships between the people of Salem. In the dressmaker, people deserve the destruction that was wrought upon them, wrought upon them because they were mean to Tilly when it was never her fault that Tilly killed Stuart and they kept on adding to her trauma, even though she clearly had a lot of emotional baggage. In the crucible, the people are innocent, especially people like Rebecca Nurse, who exudes gentleness and is a super nice lady who everyone had a high opinion of before the witch trials. I don't know why it says the white trials. I don't know what's happening here. Probably autocorrect. Let's label it on autocorrect. However, the texts were also similar in a lot of ways because they show that destruction happens to insular communities because Dungata is, a rural, is in rural Australia and outsiders are treated with wariness. In the Crucible, Salem is a small community where everyone knows the other residents of the town and they live on the edge of the wilderness which they are afraid of. The two texts are also similar because they suggest that destruction leads to new beginnings because Tilly is able to move away from confronting the people of Dungata and the theocracy ended in Massachusetts after the atrocity of Salem. Thus, the texts have a, both have a rather optimistic view on the aftermath of destruction. So there are actually two very obvious issues that I didn't mention here on the slide because I think they should be kind of self-apparent. The first is that there isn't enough nuance in uh, saying that there's this kind of optimistic view in both texts, because there really isn't. And I talked about that in the good essay from last time. Again, I'm putting good in air quotes. Um, and the reason is because the ending of the dressmaker is not necessarily good. If you hear that in the background, that's just an aeroplane passing. I love that for me. Just can't get through a video, can I? Anyway, um, the other issue that I wanted to talk about was that the um, the part where I mention that the theocracy in Massachusetts ended, I didn't mention that that was a part of text A, the crucible. Um, and that can feel confusing for some people. Um, and like the... Examiners should know this, but remember, examiners get paid very, very little to read your work, and they're pressured to be able to mark a certain amount of essays in a limited time. They're not going to sit down and give your essay all the time in the world. In fact, they're probably multitasking while they're reading your essay because they get paid so little. It's such a low-value gig for them. It's more about the professional development more than the money of it. So you want to make things as clear as possible, um, and also remember that you should always be writing for what we call the intelligent ignorant. That means someone who is intelligent but doesn't have the context 
to understand what you're writing. So you should always write with enough context for someone who is intelligent but not informed to keep up. Okay, so now let's get into the real meat of what was wrong with this paragraph. So it's actually not as bad as what I had in mind. I guess I just had a hard time writing a bad essay, like a very, very, very bad essay on purpose. But um, there was a lot of casual language there, um, and you should never use casual language. Um, and for the record, th these are real examples of casual language that I have seen in year 11 and 12 students, people writing things like she had a lot of emotional baggage. And the fix is just to be aware of how you're writing. Um, it should never feel conversational. It should feel like you're making an educated point. Okay, now the other issue was the mixing of tenses. So I talked about Rebecca Nurse in the present tense rather than the past tense. And the fix is simply to proofread as you write. And the other fix is to get used to writing in one tense so that alarm bells will go off in your head when it's not consistent all of a sudden. And then you have this conclusion line. In conclusion, the texts are similar but also different when they explore destruction. I don't like it, but it is what it is. Um, it's self-contradictory because it says that they're the same but they're different. But like, it's not technically wrong because there are similarities and there are differences. So the fix to stop this contradiction is simply to specify what is different and what is similar. And in doing that, you'll automatically sum up the points that you've made already. Now, the other thing that isn't a really big issue, but it's just something that irks me, is when you have a look at the first two words, it just says, in conclusion. That's so lower, kind of like junior secondary writing. You can do better than that. Uh, you can get a little bit more creative than that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you guys learned something, and I'll see you guys next time.